Welcome to webinar number three. This is the second piece of the puzzle for most homeowner builders. This webinar will cover steps necessary to claim your project on the CalCERT's website, review the energy calculations provided by your consultant, and electronically sign the documents for submittal to the building department. This presentation is brought to you as a courtesy of Pacific Modern Homes and Red Tape Express. Prior to claiming your project on the CalCERT's website, your energy consultant must provide you with a valid claim code. The claim code must be six or seven digits long to be valid. Once you receive the claim code, you may access the CalCERT's website and begin the process of reviewing the documents and digitally signing the energy calculations. All right, so open your web browser and go to the CalCERT's website. Again, it's www.calcerts.com, and you should see the page displayed in front of you right now. As you remember, we talked about the three buttons in the upper right-hand corner. Right now, we will need to go to the Login button. So click the Login button, and you'll be presented with a login screen. Type in your username and password. I'm going to use a default password of jhome1 and I'm going to type in the password for that. When you're entering the password, it is case sensitive. Now, once you've entered your username and password, click on the login button and you will be brought to this screen or something very similar to this screen. So the first step that you need to do is to claim your project. You will notice that at the top of the list, we have claim my project. If someone has created a project for you and you need to claim it, click here. So you click on that button and the screen will pop up. Take the claim number, in this case I know it is 729-953. Yours will be a different number. But again remember I said it has to be a six to seven digit number. There are no letters in it. If you get a claim code with letters in it uh, you didn't receive the correct claim code. Click on the claim code button and give it a second you will get this screen displayed. You want to verify that you have selected the correct project, that you didn't get the right project, so it should have the name of your home project in here. You should see the name of the energy consultant or their firm name up here at the top. Single family residence. It is a homeowner builder project. Uh, you will see the homeowner's information. This one shows uh, Johnny homeowner, but it'll actually be your name information. And then you will see some blanks in here. And we'll go down. You'll notice that some of the blanks have uh, little notes off to the side. It says uh, required for any CF2R certificate to be issued. We're not worried about CF2Rs. CF2Rs are installation certificates. So the Energy Commission has broken down the construction process into three areas. CF1R is the actual energy calculation you turn into the building department. The CF2R are all of the installation certificates that we'll discuss in a later webinar. And CF3Rs that are not even listed on here are forms that have to be completed by your HERS rater, and we'll discuss those a little bit later on as well. But you can ignore these blanks right now because we're not doing anything with the CF2R. But you come down to this item right here where it has the project address. What you need to do is type in the project address. So in this case, we know that it is 2740 Main Street and it's accepted that information and it'll pop back down to the screen uh, says that you will need to enter a permit number as required before any certifications are done those are the CF2Rs and the CF3Rs so you can leave that blank you can leave the utility information blank at this stage and you can leave the project superintendent and their contact number. If you are hiring a contractor, this is where their information would be put in. If you're the primary superintendent for the project, you would type in your name and your phone number. So for the purposes of completing this first screen of information, you're done right at this stage. So you click the Save button just to make sure everything's been saved. And it will refresh itself. Now you need to go up and you need to digitally sign the project. Now you'll notice in the upper portion of the screen there are a whole series of colored hexagons. 
you want to just click on that group. It's called a project roadmap. You want to go to the CF1R. This is where you'll sign the energy calculations. So click on that button and this new screen will pop up. Okay, obviously before you sign anything, you want to know a little bit about the project that you're getting ready to sign. Now, if you want to take a look at the energy calculations before you sign them off, you can click on work with a file and you will see listed here all the general information about the house, the climate zone it's in, how much it's percentage over the minimum requirements, the area of the house, and again it tells you all of the tests that will have to be completed and all of the forms that have to be included when you submit to the building department at the end of construction. If you want to look at it ahead of time you can click on it, you can open it in your browser, and here it will give you the actual energy calculations that will be turned into the building department. You'll notice that it says not valid for compliance, that's because we haven't completed the electronic signature process but once it's signed that will go away the watermark in the background will remain that's what has to be on the calculations for the building department to accept them a lot of general information it's not an easy form to read but if you look at page two you'll see a list of the hers features this will change for many of the projects but these are the basic four tests that you will see on almost all new construction you can scroll down through this list. It will tell you the number of bedrooms that the house has. It will give you the square footage, the average ceiling height. It will give you the assumptions for the roof, wall, and ceiling insulation. If you had a floor, it would be listed right here. It's going to give you the information on the attic, whether it's ventilated or not ventilated. It will give you the reflectance requirements and emittance requirements and whether or not you need to have a radiant barrier installed or a cool roof or both. In this case, this project has a radiant barrier, so we'll be discussing what those mean when we get down into the CF2 hours later on. This gives you all the information on the windows, gives you the window sizes, gives you the area, the U factor, the SHGC, all of the critical information on the windows associated with the project. Uh, if you have overhangs for the windows, those are all listed here. All of the assumptions on all the different walls, roofs, ceilings, floors, all of that information is provided here. Don't be concerned about any of the information you see in this right hand column. These are default values and they have nothing to do with your home. If they happen to match it, it's just by coincidence. Uh, but you'll notice down here it gives you the area again for the house, the condition portion of the house. The garage is listed here as well. And it'll go down and it'll give you again another listing of HERS verifications. You see a lot of HERS verifications that are not required on this project. It's not necessary to do all of the HERS measures. Uh, you can do them as additions if you want to, but not necessarily as a building permit requirement. So you can go down and look at all of these. It'll tell you that this water heater is an instantaneous water heater. There's the efficiency of the water heater. There's how much heating uh, gas it uses. It's 199,000 BTU uh, gas water heater. You can take a look at the air conditioning information. What was assumed for the air conditioner and the furnace? Well, here, the furnace has to have an efficiency of 92%. And if you go down here for the air conditioner, it says the EER has to be 11.2 and the SEER has to be at least 14. If you get involved in some sophisticated heating and air conditioning systems, we can get into zonal controls and multi-speed compressors and take credit for those in the energy calculations. But this is a basic house, so we're not going to be getting involved in those. Uh, we are going to be required to do the airflow. It has to flow at least 350 CFM per ton of cooling. One ton of cooling is 12,000 BTUs. So if you have a five ton air conditioner, that's 60,000 BTUs. So what we're looking for here is to make sure that the ducts are not kinked, that they're put in efficiently, and your house will pass if that's done correctly. Okay, go on down, look at a couple other items. Insulation on the ductwork has to be R6. That's pretty standard. In some cases, some areas that will be R8. The ducts are located in the attic, and a penalty for having the ducts in the attic has been taken into the energy calculations. So you have also down here, how much leakage can you have on your ductwork? 6% is the standard. You'll notice that we have now a list of other HERS verifications, none of which are required. You'll get down into the fan efficiency. The fan can use no more than 0.58 watts per CFM. Uh, if it uses more energy than that, then the ductwork was installed inefficiently or the motor's not running efficiently. So you'll be looking for the fan wattage. 
And the indoor air quality says that your indoor air quality fan, which is typically a bathroom fan, uh, has to provide at least 3,446 CFM. So the HERS rater will be in to check that. Uh, when you do use a bathroom fan to meet this requirement, which is the most common approach, you want to make sure that the duct on that fan unit is straight pipe and it taking the shortest route possible. Otherwise, those small fans cannot provide adequate ventilation, and you'll find yourself in a position where somebody's out there testing the fan, it doesn't pass, and you're going to have to either change the fan or go back in and change the ductwork, and you're at the end of construction. So you want to watch that a little bit. Okay, looking at this, everything seems reasonable, looks like it's fine. We're going to just say, okay, that's great. We're going to just close that up. We're going to go back here and say, okay, this looks great. We're going to go back to the CF1R again. And we're going to sign off the calculation. So the energy consultant's already signed. At this stage, you will pick your name off of a list. In this case, it's whatever you entered in when you uh, set up your account. For this project, it's homeowner builder John. You do not need to worry about putting in uh, a license number as a homeowner builder, and you'll just click Save Changes. Now the screen will refresh, and when it does, it'll take you back to these four tabs. You have not completed the signature process. A little deceptive. Click the sign off again. Now it pops up and it says, OK, uh, I have defined that this has one heating, space heating conditioning system. So I verify that. And I approve the PDF. The PDF is the uh, energy calculation. So you click both of those. You click Approve PDF. If for some reason you have more than one heating system, the energy calculations will need to be revised. So you'll need to talk to your energy consultant. But you click the Approve button. And the screen will refresh again. And it will bring you back to those four tabs and it will show the signature process is completed and it will tell you right there give you this nice little green dot telling you that payments required don't worry about that if you're working with our firm we will pick up the cost of the certification if the energy consultant you're using requires that you pay for the certificate you can click on that and pay for it you will have to have a credit card in order to do it it's a seven dollar fee it's not a big cost so this concludes the process for the electronic signature and the completion of the energy calculations. Thank you for viewing the webinar today. I hope this information has been helpful. If you have any questions, my name is Dave Morgan. Please feel free to give me a call at my office or contact me by email.